Before we continue, I just want to show you what we're going to try and do in the next couple of lessons because we're going to use a few patterns and um, some of it might make sense right away, some of it might be hard to understand. So I'll just try and show you here what my goal is within the next couple of lessons. So first of all, I want to keep a clean architecture here. So I want to add a few things to make my architecture as clean as possible. The first thing we'll do is we'll add something here, a pattern that we call the facade pattern. So think of this as an access point to the business logic layer. So the UI will not be able to go around this class and talk to the business logic layer. No, we won't allow that. From now on, if you want to talk to the business logic layer to your UI, you have to go through the facade. So think of this like an access point to a hotel, right? So you have one main access to the hotel and that's the facade. You walk in there and then you can go to different rooms in there, right? So this will be our access point to the business logic layer using the facade pattern. So that's the first thing we want to use. Now we're going to make something like it down here, but instead we're going to create something else and that's called a unit of work. So we're going to use the unit of work pattern and think of this guy as a unit of work right here. That's going to be also kind of like a facade. It's not going to be exactly the same because this is going to have a bit more should I say logic, it's going to be a way for me to kind of define rules. For instance, a unit of work for me from the business logic point of view could be to, uh, if I wanted to delete a customer, I might also want to delete all his orders. So step one could be get the customer, that's the first part of the unit, so get cost. So that's one. Two would be to actually get all his orders or delete all the orders. Again, it might be a bad idea, but that's what I could do. Step three could then be to delete the actual customer, right? So these are three steps, but it's actually from a business logic point of view, it's only one thing I want to do. I want to make sure that the customer is deleted. And by the way, you should also delete all of his old orders. He needs to be removed completely from the system. So that's what a unit of work can be used for. Now, the unit of work is actually going to communicate uh, through something we call the repository pattern. So that's something we also want to implement. The repository pattern here, I'll just call it repo here. The repository pattern is a way for us to communicate with the database. So a repository pattern is going to help us um, define how we can communicate with the database down here and it will be a way for us to easily work and manage data in the database and work with it in memory and then at some point ship it to the database and only pull parts of the database out in memory before we manipulate it. So we're talking about the facade pattern, we're talking about the unit of work pattern, and we're talking about the repository pattern and then one big thing that you'll have to work with now is interfaces because I want to start making all of these things now but a lot of it I want to be having a contract on how they should be, how they should work before I actually start building them. So the next big thing will be interfaces. Now you guys kind of know how we will use this. We'll have the facade that's the only access point for the UI. We'll have the unit of work that'll be the only access point for the actual um, business logic layer to the data access layer and we'll have the repo which will kind of talk to the database and get data from that. See you in the next lesson where we start doing it.